The Path to World War III. We'll be talking about that in the underground on Patreon. Appreciate my Patreon members uh, cover me. Patreon.com forward slash Mike Glover for the underground right after this. Let's talk about a few things. One, this attack, this rocket attack that happened at this hospital in Gaza. Now, I look, I am dumbfounded by the national media's position. I mean, should we be surprised? I don't think so. At this point, I'm not surprised by anything, but the national media in its position with specific players are putting us in a position where we likely will be in World War III because of it. Every single national media organization ran with the headline, Israeli airstrike kills 500 people in Gaza. Now, who's reporting the airstrikes or any of the numbers that are happening inside Gaza? It's Hamas. I mean, Hamas as an organization literally has controls, controls of everything. So the 500 number, that's like a battalion. Unless there was a battalion formation in the parking lot of the hospital, then 500 people weren't killed. Now, Hamas, historically, by every major news organization, including the New York Times, has been reported to inflate numbers. You think they're a terrorist organization. That's what they do. So some of the things that came out about this uh, attack, and I've been covering all this stuff live. I've been doing Fox News contribution. I've been um, staying like in the weeds of everything that's happening, reviewing GoPro footage from Hamas, all the stuff. Look, guys, this was definitely not an airstrike. I mean, let, let me put my 18 Bravo Special Forces Weapons guy hat on. The reason we know it's not, I mean, I knew it wasn't from the initial footage that was captured by Palestinians, by potentially Hamas media arms that are trying to capture the worst doom and gloom. They literally panned the entire parking lot. And people are like, yeah, but they want you to see what you, they want you to see. No, guys, this is Hamas video. It scans across an open parking lot in front of the hospital. And what you see is charring this black carbon all over everything. You know what that is? That is the combustion of a propellant. That's what that is. Also, you'll notice that all the vehicles are burned out. None of the vehicles in particular are destroyed. I think one vehicle was on its side, but out of the 10 vehicles that I saw, all of them were burned in place. Now, I, you know, just a, a lot of people don't know this because I've been reading the comments. Let me line this out for you. A rocket that has a combustible chamber of propellant is launching the, the warhead, the ballistic component, the explosive via that propellant. These guys are using rusty pipes as the propellant homemade rockets, right? Now you, you take that and you set it aside versus a missile. Israel has the ability, surgical capability to put a missile warhead through a windshield on the driver versus the passenger. I mean, this technology exists in any first world nation, including Israel and the United States of America. What you see in the char charring, where you see a lot of propellant burning, and then you see shrapnel thrown into the side of the building, which is apparent in the video, that is not what you would see in an actual strike from a missile that has a burning capability to get to its destination and an explosive warhead to explode. So that's one. You don't see the crater. There's no crater. In fact, if you actually watch the video from the Palestinian perspective, from the Hamas perspective, there's not anything close to more than a dozen people from what I physically counted from the Hamas video. I mean, there's several videos, including cell phone camera video of people who were there that pan around. And when you count the actual people, there's about a dozen, not 500. Now, uh, by the way, that video or that video um, that was capturing the missile or the rocket attack from Hamas. It's now claiming um, uh, the Americans and Israelis are claiming that it came from um, a jihadist Islamic organization, Islamic Jihad, that launched it from behind the cemetery. You see from an Al Jazeera camera the rocket being launched and then one of the rockets being diverted 
and then an explosion. That's the rocket failing and then exploding inside the courtyard in the parking lot of the hospital. Now, when you take this in its totality, Israel comes out and makes a statement. Hamas came out minutes after the attack and said, 500 people are dead. 500 people are dead. Did you have a battalion formation in the middle of the parking lot? How do you know 500 people? They just put out a number. Israel waited to do the analysis before jumping on any bandwagon and gave very specific details because they're a sovereign nation doing deliberate targeting of bad guys, guys. They're not a terrorist organization that just makes stuff up. What the, the example I made of this is, can you imagine the national media taking cues and making national headlines from Al-Qaeda while the World Trade Center is still smoldering in rubble? Can you imagine that? That's literally what's happening now. Hamas, everything Hamas has put out, the national media, especially MSNBC, has ran with, with their official narrative of the factual accounts that are happening on the ground. I even heard an MSNBC reporter say, 500 people were killed. That's fact. He, he basically said, that's fact. What we don't see in his analysis, what we don't see is this happening where 500 people get killed from a rocket attack because they're payload. They can't carry that much payload. So typically we see that in Israeli missiles, like literally lining out the path to, yeah, it's probably that. And then when they're faced and confronted, like they're running these pieces while they're panning the camera, taking the footage, the B-roll footage across a parking lot, they're literally saying a hospital was directly hit and destroyed and 500 people were killed. And they're not showing any of the evidence to, to contrary to that argument. So it's like nobody except for Fox News has literally lined out there is nobody close to 500 people that have been killed. The analysis shows us no crater. And the Israeli Defense Force just put out ISR. There's, guys, there's a literal drone ISR intelligence surveillance reconnaissance video of them flying around the site post blast where there's no bodies. And you can see exactly because it's running clear thermal of where the attack happened, where the explosion took place in the parking lot and everything else it affected. It didn't even compromise a building in a missile strike. You would get that. The last piece of information, which uh, nobody in the national media as of today, after two days ago, everything that was reported that day was a lie. The national media today hasn't put out any of these rebuttals to their headlines, including two members of Hamas talking about what took place and literally lining out the mistake they made via the rocket attack that they caused. So the entire conversation is knucklehead one versus knucklehead two. And he's like, hey, did you see the rocket attack? Um, yeah, we, what's up? Yeah, we think that's Islamic Jihad. That was like us. What do you mean that's us? Yeah, yeah, we launched it from the cemetery behind, which, by the way, is against the Geneva Convention. They're already breaking the rules of land warfare, but that's what terrorists don't do. They don't follow rules of land warfare. So, yeah, we launched it behind the cemetery. What do you mean cemetery? Is it a cemetery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he literally gives them directions. He says, yeah, it's, if you go into the, uh, the building, it's off to the right and behind you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn. But so that was, that was us. Yeah, that was us. Ooh, okay, yeah, we shouldn't probably say that was us. Yeah, you shouldn't say it was, it was us. Oh, my, man, that's bad. That entire conversation released by Hamas is available for national media organizations to report on, but nobody has, because it's not a big deal. It's like it completely debunked, but we're still running with it because we want a day of rage. We want the Arab world and some moral equivalency to be balanced with what's taking place in Israel, except we can't trust the numbers that are coming from Hamas. Guys, there have been accidents that happen in war where Israel has come back months, even days, even years and said, we made that mistake. That, that wasn't them that we, like we made that mistake. You know who's not making up uh, for their mistakes? <laughs> Hamas. Why? 
because they're terrorists. That's why. So um, right now, they, they, they even had on MSNBC the death count poll in contrast in national headlines where they had two pieces of information, the death tolls and then the injuries. And it said in Gaza, 2,700 plus because they took the 500. That was reported by Hamas. That's literally likely a dozen people and added it to the lump sum. That hospital, by the way, um, guess what? That is a proposed and known Hamas headquarters. Well, well, why would they do that? Because they don't care. There's actually a Vice episode on uh, Vice's YouTube channel a couple years ago of them walking through and talking about the is issues between Israel and Gaza, showing the underground labyrinth that exists underneath. This is what concerns me the most with these hostages that are being held. Right now, 20 plus um, hostages, American hostages, 200 plus hostages from all over the place, including Israel and the international community. And where are they? They're underneath the main city. I think phase one of the campaign is prepping the objective, right? Destroying the infrastructure and networks. Phase two is going to be a ground campaign, guys. Like, how do you conduct a hostage rescue underground? Um, being somebody who has done underground training and rehearsals and practice for the worst case scenario, specifically for me, the North Korean threat, and done underground hostage rescue training, the most intense and dangerous thing that you could ever do. This is gonna happen eventually because to get to their bodies at a minimum, if the worst case scenario happens where terrorists actually kill their hostages, which happens all the time, then we're gonna have to go underground. And who do you think is gonna be underground? Underground is going to be a fight between American special operators and terrorists who are holding hostages, especially American hostages, captive. Now, a, a couple of things to be concerned about. One, Biden went there. I'll talk about this in the underground as well. And look, I, I will say Biden can being conclusive about anything is rare. Him being, hey, hard line in the sand about anything because he always goes back and forth is rare. He did that in his support for Israel when he wasn't falling asleep, talking to everybody in, in media. It literally looked like he was sleep talking in every single, in, in one instance, I was watching an interaction where I thought they were capturing him mumbling to the woman next to him, and he was actually giving a speech to first responders. Um, yeah. Um, so when you look at the $100 billion right now that we have set aside for international support of both Ukraine and the Israelis, this is a very separate issue. We are lumping in a proposed budget that's going to be around the number of $100 billion when we're not even considering the border crisis. If we're looking at national security and you're focused on giving $100 billion to Ukraine and Israel, but you're not focused on your own national security, that's a problem. That's a problem, especially as we're broke as a nation. So I don't know if you checked the latest headlines, but also we don't have a Speaker of the House. Jim Jordan was 20 votes short of getting elected in. Um, I don't know how he's going to get these people to turn over because most of these guys are hardliners that were upset that McCarthy was voted out. Um, but we don't have a government to be able to vote on the things and get this legislation that needs to be done to support Israel, Ukraine, even national security threats here at home because we have anarchy. We have chaos. I mean, right now, um, with, with many arrests that just took place in the Capitol, we had people that were literally campaigning for Palestinians and Hamas that were protesting in the Capitol building that assaulted police officers. Again, you won't see that in national media or headlines. Um, and I wonder if they're going after th those guys. Um, I wonder if they're taking all the footage and targeting anybody who was there in that building. What about Hawaii? Has anybody heard anything about Lahaina? Um, what about our economy? What about the fentanyl drug overdose crisis? What about the cartel pouring over our border and killing Americans in all the ways? 
King Abdullah said, absolutely, no refugees. That's a country of 70% Palestinians. And the King of Jordan is literally saying on TV, absolutely not. Egypt, same deal. Absolutely not. We're taking, not taking any refugees. So how come people who are literally Palestinian, Palestinians can take hard line positions in the sand and say, we are not going to be involved in what this crisis is, even to support the Arab world, because we're taking care of first and foremost, our own citizens, but we can't do that. It, it just blows my mind. It, it actually is frustrating as hell as, as hell. Uh, when I, when I look at the, um, a lot of the footage, one thing I noticed about a lot of the overwhelming footage being released, including the IDF on the Israeli defense's YouTube channel, they have released the footage from both Hamas perspectives and post assault on Israeli villages, the aftermath footage from the Israeli perspective. I mean, the guys wore GoPros as they were breaking out of the fence lines running into these 15 different targeted sites, killing innocent people. Now the alarms went off when this kicked off. That alarm tells most of the Israelis to go into their safe house or into their safe room that's typically in the bottom of their house that has more reinforced locking mechanisms on a, a steel door. That didn't prevent a lot of these people from being killed. And one target set from the Hamas perspective, in one village, 60 people were murdered. Over 60 people were murdered. They were compromised. The locking mechanisms were shot out or, or they used fragmentation grenades or explosives. And they were literally burned, in some cases, alive as a family. And then post-analysis via the IDF, they show that footage, guys. This is what these people did. The concerning part for me is in some cases, it took up to six hours for people to respond. Now, that should be a question that we should be able to have a, an open and frank conversation about. Why did it take six hours for the entire nation of Israel? The entire nation of Israel is IDF. Like, I don't know if you know this, but everybody has to serve in the Israeli Defense Force. The entire nation is IDF. They're trained and capable people in a place, in a country the size of New Jersey. How the hell does it take six hours for people to respond? The most alarming footage that I saw was a video that was captured via these festival goers that were driving around in circles trying to break contact from the situation they're in. Most of the people that they were with in the initial reactions to the gunshots in the distance, they heard the gunshots, they heard the explosions, they literally got inside their vehicle, started driving around circles because nobody knew what to do. Nobody knew where to go. The security was all out of whack and they got on the road. They have three hours of footage of driving away from the festival. They ran into the Israeli Defense Force guys twice. Once where they pulled up and they were just initially reacting hours after they had been driving on the road away from the festival. There are festival goers that waited eight hours hiding in ditches and in trees waiting for their first response. You are your own first response, that whole deal where you talk about like, hey, no one's coming to save you, you gotta be prepared. But, like, even in a country that has every single avenue in surveillance and reconnaissance and quick reaction forces and everybody's trained still, six to eight hours is response time in the worst atrocity since the Holocaust is how long it took. That, th those questions to be asked. Like, like uh, Charlie Kirk said, was there a stand down order? Did anybody say, do not respond, do not react? And, and those questions need to be asked. Um, when I think about the national media's position on this, and I'll expound on this in, uh, in the Patreon in the underground, I think about war and campaigning from my experience. Uh, the, the analogy I want to use is like, it's like sound. When, when you are in war and in conflict, you're at the origin site of sound. You can see where the sound's coming from. You can hear it. You can feel it. All your senses are activated. 
There is a war, there is a conflict, there is a fight that's going on. And the people who are on the targets, on the objectives, at the tail end or the receiving end of these strikes, they understand what that is. They don't have to speculate or assume. But as that sound re re reverberates, all these things start to get beyond the origin site. We start to lose it a little. Like, what was that? What was that sound? We don't see it. We can't feel it in our chest. We just, oh yeah, there's a little echo of a sound. So as that starts to exp expand, we start to lose sight of what's happening at the origin site and what we do is make assumptions. So if you're not on site and you're five wavelengths down the road and you're just making assumptions, assumptions are like assholes, guys. Everybody's got one. They're pretty shitty. Everybody's talking about it, but nobody knows if it's true. I mean, it's like me in the veteran affairs system trying to do a, a sound test and I'm hearing the, the beeping in my headphones and I'm pushing the button when I hear the beep and then I don't hear a beep because I think I'm deaf and then I just assume there's a beep so I push the button. We're making a lot of assumptions based on the national media's reporting of Hamas, based on them not being on site, not being at the origin, not understanding the senses that need to take place in order to report factual evidence from a terrorist organization. When it's all said and done, it doesn't matter. I, I, I talked about this the other day on my social media. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter because what I think is taking place is they want World War III. The Arab world has wanted this from the origin of its ideology. I, I know because I've been involved in campaigns fighting jihadists that have wanted to clack me off. I've had a jihadist clack himself off 15 meters from me. So I understand this very closely and this analogy of being right at the origin source of sound and conflict and war. You know, he's not getting this right as the national media. Thank God for private outlets and private resources for national media. Thank God for it. Lastly, um, a path to World War III. There's an easy path there. Uh, one of the things I want to I want to bring up to you is as of this morning, this morning three drones were shot down from a foreign site that were flying into Iraq to attack American bases and installations. Also, Iran-backed Hezbollah has put out attack warnings on American sites via their backing through Iran diplomatic channels saying that we will not only back this, but they're playing a very dangerous game. In fact, from one of my sources, Heather, and she don't know her last name, um, as of this morning, Russia made a statement yesterday stating that U.S. troops in the Mediterranean are within striking distance. Russia said that. And Putin, Putin has met with Xi in China this week. The alleged Hezbollah statement yesterday from, from today... This is their statement, and I quote, from today, the resistance in Iraq has practically begun to enter the battlefield and direct its strikes at American bases. This is a very dangerous game, guys. If Iran decides to sanction through Saudi, through Lebanon, uh, through all the Arab players, where we had the opportunity to have this meeting between Jordan, Saudi, and all the players, if Iran convinces everybody in the Arab world based on Israel's actions, which are fake news. Like these aren't even actual actions. The knee jerk reaction from the Arab world when they heard 500 people were killed at a hospital was to shut down all the meetings, shut down all diplomatic ties. We don't want any communication. If that happens, who, do you, who, who else do you think is going to be sanctioned? If that happens, who else do you think is going to be sanctioned? The United States is going to be sanctioned. Can we afford to be sanctioned by Saudi Arabia where we get most of our oil when we've literally taken away all of our reliance and put it on foreign nations, economies, oil, all the things, products, food. We've literally outsourced it all as a nation. 
All it takes is a couple of actions for Iran to get a little crazy, even through Hezbollah, and we'll be in a full-scale war. There will be boots on the ground with American troops, you better believe it, if Hezbollah starts attacking uh, Israeli bases and American interest as, they, as they've already proposed, as they've already launched this morning, like literally launched this morning. Guys, I want to say a big shout out to everybody. We hit a million subscribers on YouTube. Phil Craft Survival, despite being demonetized as a channel, has hit, hit a million subs. I don't know, that's like a plaque or something. Like you get like a little thing or a coin or you get something. A million subs. We couldn't have hit that milestone a million subscribers without you. Also, I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, I've been talking about this on this channel thing on Instagram. I like the channel because it's kind of like I get to disseminate all the information. I don't get lost in the sauce with too much traffic back and forth. But I asked in the survey if guys wanted me to put um, this, which is our new chess rig, on a pre-order. And overwhelmingly, everybody's like, yeah, do a pre-order. So we did a limited run of these. Why is a civilian chess rig different than a military chess rig? Well, because you're not in the military. There are different considerations. I.e., if you're on a motorcycle or you're overlanding, you need the equipment on your person, but you don't need it naturally exposed. So the ability to EDC, close contain all your gear and equipment, and have a dedicated first aid pouch with all the cool stuff that I've seen in overlanding, motorcycle, hell, camping. If I'm camping with my family and I need to get access to certain pieces of equipment, how do you do that? Well, a JPC, a cry precision, a jumpable plate carrier is really cool, but not like going to work at a fireside with your kids when you need all the general purpose space and a civilian chest rig. You can get more information about this in the videos that I posted on my Instagram in my channels at mike.a.clever. And we will be doing a pre-order for this very, very soon. Super excited about this in small quantity, small batch quantities, small batch quantities. Uh, guys, this podcast is sponsored by Bite Rifle Coffee. They gave me for my Might Force audience a coupon code. I'm going to share that with you guys because I appreciate all the investment and your guys' time. I couldn't do this show without you, especially you patrons out there. But if you use Mike Force 20, you guys can save 20% on a sub. See the links down below. Check out all their stuff. Also available at your local Walmart, Bass Pro. The list goes on. Thanks, guys. Hey, headed off to the underground for my show. I appreciate you guys. Uh, make sure you check out the app, all the things that we're doing. We're working really hard at Philcraft to give you all the information to be better prepared. Till next time, peace out, guys.